All right. Looks like we have a quorum today, and I want to uh, say thank you all uh, at the outset for uh, making sure that that happens. Uh, wonderful thing. I know uh, many people can't make congregational meetings or out of town, uh, so thank you for being here and being willing to participate in, in what we're doing. Uh, let me open with prayer. Father, we thank you for uh, the opportunity uh, to uh, practice good governance. We pray that you would bless our efforts today. I uh, pray that you would bless uh, the work that we engage in. Um, we know from your promise in Matthew 16 that you are the one who builds the church. And so we ask that you would take our humble efforts today, um, pondering our budget, pondering leadership and service, pondering our mission together. You would take what we do. You would use it to build up your church. We would be holy and healthy and on mission for you. We ask in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. amen. It's a participatory service, so we uh, meeting, so we got to do that. All right, the purpose of this meeting is announced uh, uh, more than 30 days prior, uh, according to our Constitution, uh, is uh, to elect officers and to hear a budget report. We'll also say a few things about where we are as a church. i communicate with you all about that. Um, we need, uh, at the outset, to elect a moderator. Do I hear any nominations? Okay, do I hear a second? Okay. Any uh, discussion? Any other suggestions? I'm happy to pass this along. Uh, well, all right. All in favor? All right. All right. We'll do it that way. Do I hear a motion to elect Chris Powell the clerk of this meeting? The clerk is responsible for uh, being responsible. I think that's like a good... Okay. So moved. Any here a second? Okay. Any discussion or counterproposals? Okay. All in favor of Chris serving as clerk? Aye. Aye. That means that the records will get to Presbytery and will be reported back to the session. We're very grateful for that. Thank you, Chris. Uh, Mr. Clerk, do we have a quorum present? Okay. Just so grateful for people who can count. Um, so this is the purpose of the meeting. We're going to uh, pr uh, proceed to elect officers. Are you now ready to, to proceed to the election of additional ruling elders and deacons from the slate presented, are you, by acclamation? Okay. All right, so you should be familiar with this. We released the names and uh, some information uh, about these deacon and elder nominees. Uh, just to remind you of the process, they were nominated by the congregation. You can submit names. Uh, went through a process of, of screening and, and training, um, working with, uh, with them, talking to their spouses as well, just trying to figure out if this is like a good fit during the season. Um, and then the slate was presented 30 days in advance. You've had the opportunity to talk to them or uh, weigh in otherwise. Um, so uh, the vote will be conducted by secret ballot. We need the deacons to go ahead and come forward and, and pass those out. And while we're doing this, we don't normally make a big deal of uh, men who are rolling off the session or um, uh, rolling off of the diaconate. I don't, I don't remember that being part of meetings previously. But then we've never had a, a three-year period where Don and Garth served where we changed senior pastors and went through COVID. Uh, and so um, if you happen to see Don and Garth, please express your gratitude. Who's rolling off the session? I mean, who's rolling off the diaconate? Matt Hahn, you want to raise your hand, okay? Never before have we had deacons doing things like cleaning the pews off with antibiotic whatever uh, uh, between, between meetings and uh, wearing masks and all kinds of other such things. So uh, really grateful for Matt and others who've served in that capacity. Uh, we do secret ballot. Uh, you're welcome to vote uh, for or against. You're also welcome to write in names. Uh, that's, uh, I don't know how much space we have for that, but you can take advantage of whatever is there. We'll give you the chance to make sure you have something to write with. As a reminder, you have to be a, a, a member of North Shore Fellowship. A communing member means old enough to have uh, been admitted to the Lord's table. Uh, you can have that vote and that privilege of weighing in on, on, on who leads here. All right. We'll give you a few moments to go through that ballot, make the necessary notes. We'll have the deacons take those back up here momentarily.
If you're not a commuting member, you're a little on the young side and you happen to get a ballot, you're welcome to draw pictures of any of these nominees. All right. I'm going to pass these back in. We're going to give the deacons a chance to uh, pass this along to our counters. We have professional math people standing by, and uh, they'll report back here. Um, but the next thing that we need to do is present the budget to you all. The session uh, very recently uh, took the numbers that the Finance Committee and the staff had, had worked through uh, over the course of, of several months in our planning uh, and approved a budget. And uh, so Raj Pearsant, who's the head of the Finance Committee, is going to come talk to you a little bit about that and uh, give you a, a bird's eye view of what it is that we're uh, doing with our funds. Yeah, right there. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Um, this has been an amazing year. Um, we concluded um, last year so financially established that we were able to do full ministry, even in the wake of a pandemic. And... Uh, we had a significant surplus, which I'll share with you in a moment, but um, your generosity has been amazing in this church, and we are grateful, and it makes the finance committee job pretty easy. We're, we don't have a whole lot of work to do when we see the opportunity that um, we have before us. So we're actually, this year, um, we're growing our budget a bit, so let's talk about that for a minute. We have um, our top priorities in budgeting this year are um, in-person discipleship and fellowship, paying down our Frazier property next door, um, and the building debt, of course, and just good stewardship of our general finances. Um, so we have set a budget this year of 1.55 million. Can I get that slide shown here? Okay, right here. Uh, now this is a, um, about a 9% increase over last year. And, and you'll see that our history, how we've been operating um, through, through 2019. And this current budget is, is going to allow for a number of other services and uh, administrative opportunities that we have not been able to do heretofore. So thank you for that. So this is what the budget shows, and that's, um, this is going, how it's going to be explained. Now, there's no slide for this, but the personnel expenses have increased by 5%, which is modest and reasonable. Huh? 0 0.5, 0 0.5%, yes, I'm sorry. Um, and then let's, can I have the um, pie chart? Here we go. So this is how we have divided our services this year. Um, gathered worship, 22% of our budget. Administration and property, 27% of our budget. Growing in fellowship, 23%. And mercy and missions, 28%. And so um, it's, again, a balanced and well-healed um, budget. Um, we plan on paying down our property next door by $170,000 this year. And, let me, and can I have a slide of how we have paid down our debts on that particular building? And at our current rate, we can have that building paid off in the next four years based on the generosity of the congregation. And th we had a surplus that was significant this last year, almost $200,000. And so um, the, the very good services of our administration taking care of our church and not spending and your generosity has allowed us to have a large surplus that so we're able to pay down debt. And that's what we're attempting to do. So that's really our budget this year, $1.55 million. And um, we're here to answer any questions for you if you have those. And Chris, you can help me if we get questions on anything that... Are there any questions regarding the budget? Graphs are in the bulletin. Pardon me? Graphs are in the bulletin. Yeah, they are. The graphs are in the bulletin, yes. Uh, yeah, Ben. Yeah, Chris will help, help me on this. And so what we do, can we put that back up here? Um, Chris, go ahead and do the gathered worship. Um, like, for example, missions, mercy missions, are, that's both local, international, and, and our mercy that we do through our deacons fund and how we take care of our own congregation. So that's in that. But go ahead, Chris, tell them about the, uh, the other. 
Yeah, some, in some of these respects, it's hard to break it down into a pie chart. Some things just don't cost a lot of money, like Sunday school and fellowship groups are virtually free, but you do have to have a building to do it in and staff. And so uh, those things, it's hard to decide where to put them, but our administrative and property really is just uh, paper for bulletins and subscription to software licenses, things like that, uh, insurance, and of course, property costs themselves, including Fraser Avenue. Um, our gathered worship is mostly uh, the, the worship, the music that you see up front, and also some fraction of the nursery that is put, a, put aside for that. Growing in fellowship would include anything from conferences to pastoral expenses of different kinds, um, and actually does include, um, we pay for counseling for a number of people out of a pastoral discretion fund, so that would also include that children's ministry, youth ministry. Um, yeah. Is that, I, I never figured out from what you were saying, but which, what, where's the pastor's salaries and the salaries of Oh, no, no, no. This is after, this is non-personnel expenses. So this, is non-personnel. this chart is non-personnel commit, uh, expenses. Personnel is, excuse me, personnel is about 63% of our budget. This is the balance of the budget, and this is where that's, uh, we spend it. And, and our, historically, in this church, and we're 18 years old? Yeah. Our, our personnel budget has stayed in between the 62 and the 64% of our budget from the very beginning. Other questions? All right. Well, thank you. We, your, your finance committee thanks you for your generosity. Keep making it easy for us, and if you, if you really do want to help pay down the debt quicker over here, we give all types of opportunity for that, so please help us there. Thank you. And your pastor is grateful for you as well. Uh, certainly something that, I, that we thank the Lord for, just the, the stewardship that's going on here, and uh, do pray that that will continue so we can continue to do good things. We've gone up. Uh, in terms of how much is leaving our church and going out to missions, and uh, that's very exciting for me. Uh, some of you all know that when I, was, uh, when I came here, I was the assistant pastor, and one of the things I was in charge of is, is global missions. So to see those numbers start to go up really makes me enthusiastic, um, and um, that's, that's ticking one box that I, I care about greatly. Um, do we have a report back from the numbers people? No, you're still counting. All right. I appreciate the care and concern. Uh, let me just address just a few things then um, with you. Um, like, a, first of all, I'd like a Bible. You, Ephesians 4. Bring that up. We've been going through Ephesians as a, as a, a staff together, uh, partly because it has such wonderful things to say about the church of Jesus, uh, giving us some shape for who we are and what we're doing, what we're supposed to be about, how we're supposed to respond to this work of the Spirit. Uh, that's uh, going on in us, um, and uh, Ephesians 4, 4 through 8, and 11 through 16, is what I would like, uh, like to read for us right now. There's one body and one spirit, just as you all were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father over all, who is over all and through all and in all. And I get to see that when I stand up here and in front of God's people. And just, uh, just remember that he's at work in, in each of these lives. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he led captives in his train and he gave gifts to men. So just as there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, there's also just all kinds of gifts that are going on. And I also get the privilege of seeing that, not just up here and knowing what you all represent individually, uh, the, the important work that you do, uh, in serving the Lord uh, throughout your relationships and your vocations, uh, your life with your neighbors and, and all the rest, um, but also um, the, the, what that means as we function together as a body uh, with these different gifts. So verse 11, uh, to pick up, it's an appropriate thing for us to read on a, a day when we're electing elders and deacons. It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors and teachers, to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God, becoming mature, attaining to the whole measure 
of the fullness of Christ. Speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into Him who is the head, that is the Messiah. From Him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament and sinew, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. I just prayed, uh, referencing Matthew 16, that Jesus builds his church, but here's the way he does that. He uses you all to do that. Now this morning we're talking about Matthew 18 and the difficult task of faithful confrontation, and that's one of the mechanisms that the Lord uses to build us up in his church. We're electing elders and deacons in their service and their leadership, and that's one of the mechanisms that, that God uses to build us up in his church. He uses all of us in some way for this purpose. It's a very, very strange image. A, 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 a body putting itself back together, like one of these robots that you see, fixing itself and putting itself, reassembling itself. Really a remarkable thing. So that's what the church is. Let's talk a little bit about what the church does uh, to make all this happen and what North Shore does. My brother-in-law is a car guy. And he's been working on uh, assembling a car. I, I no longer think he's really working on that. I, there's something else going on because he's been working on it for 10 years. And I, so I go out to the garage and I grab a beverage and I'm looking at what he does and he pops open the hood and, uh, you know, and I'm, I know some of the parts of a car uh, and so I have some idea of like what's supposed to be going. Is that a carburetor there? You know, it's probably not, but I can at least try to make conversation. Um, and, um, you know, he'll show me what he's working on, and, and, and uh, we get to kind of participate in that. And it's appropriate for us here to open up the hood a little bit. That's a pun. Y'all can just enjoy that. Um, and share about NSF. Because for some of you, the, 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 the structure of things at North Shore Fellowship and in Presbyterianism in general is just as foreign uh, as cars are to me. Um, so deacons serve elders or shepherds, and uh, what we're doing today is, is, is ensuring that that structure is sustained. Uh, we give people breaks. We don't want to burn people out, uh, making sure that people are on task with that um, and that we have what we need to, to lead us and to serve uh, in our community. Um, I could tell you all kinds of things I've heard just this week about what deacons are doing, uh, taking care of uh, a widow, um, uh, meeting some needs, and what elders do difficult conversations, uh, pondering leadership, voting on the budget, looking through all the numbers. Um, the session also recently passed motions creating some committees. We are 18 years old now. We don't, you know, our church, North Shore doesn't buy cigarettes, but we could. We're old enough now to do that. Okay, we're 18, so we got to act kind of grown up. And uh, we're, we're, we're establishing committees. Is that too much? <laughs> Just trying to make sure y'all are awake. I know these meetings can get boring. Uh, we're, try, we're establishing committees so that there's a good skeleton, right, for the frame of the body and everything that we're doing to, to work. And so uh, that includes personnel, uh, uh, adjusting our finance committee, a facilities committee uh, to uh, help us steward our, our, our buildings well. Um, previously, this past fiscal year, we've redeveloped the Global Missions Committee. They're doing great work uh, evaluating uh, what's coming in. Uh, helping set priorities for, you know, how we're going to spend our, our resources, your resources, to support God's mission around the world. Um, and so uh, these, uh, these committees are uh, not yet populated. So if you know of someone who belongs on a, on a facilities committee or on a personnel committee, you can let us know. You can nominate that person. The session is over all of this, and they'll make sure that people are um, uh, put into place who have uh, something to bring uh, to this. So that's some growing up that we have to do at North Shore um, with, these, uh, with these committees that will be like a skeleton for everything else to kind of grow on. We want to mature as an organization. But that doesn't get at the why, like why we're doing that uh, or what we're doing. Uh, my brother-in-law builds cars because uh, he likes cars. He apparently has no intention for this. car has been in the garage for 10 years. I think my sister would very much like for it to be like out on the streets roaming around. And and uh, she's never parked her car in the garage. You can imagine that. So what's the mission? Where is this car going? I think it's just a building exercise. But for us, that's not enough. We've got to go somewhere. We've got to be out there in the world serving, doing our vocations the way that God has called us to do our vocations. Um, 
So that's one part of our mission. One way that we describe it sometimes when we're talking, we've said that our goal is to help you fulfill your vows. We looked at one of our vows this morning in the service. I want to remind you of three of these things that you pledge to do. Receive and rest upon Jesus alone for salvation as he's offered in the gospel. We want to help you do that through worship, through gospel conversations and gospel study. We want to help that work its way continually through your life. The next one, in humble reliance upon the grace of the Holy Spirit, we want you to endeavor to live as becomes the followers of Christ. To study uh, the the ethical call uh, to live with justice and mercy in your world and to figure out what that means with, with in your neighborhood and in your city and in your community. To figure out how to run your business in a godly way. There, there are men and women who have done that for us to learn from. And then finally, we also want to support the church in its worship and work to the best of our ability. And many of you do this in so many ways as well. We want to facilitate that. We don't want to do all the work. We have plenty to do. We, we want you uh, participating in these committees, helping lead worship, and, uh, and all the rest. So our budget reflects this. Uh, it reflects that we're trying to ensure a full year of worship and work and highlighting the work of the gospel in our lives. Another thing that we're doing is we're studying Matthew's gospel. We're looking at the words of Jesus who said, my mission for you is to get all these people to obey me, to get people to bend the knee to King Jesus. And so our budget for us as a staff and for the members at NSF, we're we're prioritizing that discipleship. Um, What we're doing is being and making disciples of Jesus who become like him. Being and making disciples of Jesus who become like him. That's our task. That's what Jesus tells us to do in the Great Commission. So that's what we're setting about doing. We want to help you with your discipleship And if Ephesians is right, as you are a disciple of Jesus, you're also going to contribute to making other people's disciples, to help them take the Word of God in every area of their life more seriously, to figure out how to to live their life as a way that that, that measures up to the Gospel and that pursues this, this vision of becoming like Jesus that Ephesians lays out and that Jesus calls His apostles to. One really important word needs to be added added to that. Being and making disciples of Jesus who become like Him. There's one word we need to add to that. Together. Because so often, brothers and sisters, our religion and our practice and the way that we view the world, it's all about us as individuals. And we can't function that way. Uh, Tim Keller has a a four-part article uh, series on renewing the church in the 21st century. Uh, And one of the sources that he he references there is uh, Robert Bella, Habits of the Heart. You may be familiar with this bestseller. Uh, And what Bella says is that our era that we live in is the most individualistic in human history. It's the most oriented towards just me, myself, and I, and what I think and what I want to do. No culture more than American culture elevates the interests of the individual over those of family, community, and nation, No culture more than the U.S. culture attributes one's character, identity, and life conditions uh, strictly to individual decisions and choices. There's all kinds of implications of this individualism. But we need together. We need community. Because as we saw in our sermon this morning, you can't function alone. You have to be in community. You have to have other people providing inputs for you. And that's why there's a diversity of missions, as Paul says in Ephesians 4. We just looked at That's why there's so many different gifts represented in this body. Um, So for discipleship this year, for you it may be connecting with a fellowship group. Liz at nsfellowship.org. It may be connecting with uh, with women or, or with women and men who get together for a Bible study. You can contact Liz or Heather at nsfellowship. Dave or Heather. Dave Masoner. Heather Dirksy, um, we're all first name at nsfellowship.org. Um, some of you I know are just hanging on by the skin of your teeth, and uh, it's all you can do to make it to Sunday worship, and I know I'm, I'm preaching very much to the choir here, um, but gather, support, and encourage others. 
I talked to one young family, and it's all they can do just to get together with a couple of other uh, couples who have young kids and try to encourage one another. That is being the church, and that's a beautiful thing. But there's also opportunities. Come to Sunday worship. Come to Sunday school, uh, 8.30 or uh, 9.45. Uh, We're changing up the schedule. We think that may help more people participate. Um, We want to see you uh, coming and studying and becoming disciples, becoming like Jesus together. I'm so insistent on that because I've seen so much fruit already in this body. I want to tell you about Thursday, just Thursday. Here's what I got to experience on Thursday. I got to hear someone say, I love the worship because it's, it's well done, but it's not over-the-top entertainment, and it brings me into the presence with Jesus. I got to hear someone say that they were blessed by the intergenerational opportunities presented by VBS. It was a real blessing for them to get to know people who weren't in their age bracket as they came and served. I got to hear about someone who was blessed by a support group. I kid you not, all this happened just on Thursday. What I love about this is that this is not just professional ministry, brothers and sisters. This is not just what uh, Dave and Heather and Chris and Jason and John are doing and Liz is doing. This is, this is stuff that's being uh, woven out uh, through our body. Our support groups are not run by the pastors. Um, our, uh, our, many of our initiatives are not run by the pastors, but they're lay uh, events. Friday night, we had a wonderful, uh, successful men's uh, event I got to hear last night from someone who really appreciated and enjoyed that opportunity. They described what it meant to them. That was not an initiative that we came up with. That's just something that we're supporting and telling you all about. I could go on and on with stories just from Thursday. There was a drive-by report as I walked by Lynn's office. She said, oh, there's something that's looking really good on the budget. I don't know who's giving what, but I know that it looks really good, and I'm immensely grateful for what you all are doing there. I also heard um, two stories of kindness about the same couple who were here this morning. Now, I'm not going to name them because I don't want to embarrass everybody. But I heard from a single person who had been invited over to dinner at their household. And I heard from a widow who was receiving a visit from the woman in this family. That's being the church. That is the church on mission. And then on that same day, Thursday... Uh, those of you who get uh, North, North, Shore, North Side Neighborhood House's uh, volunteer uh, spotlight, uh, you get the newsletter, maybe you noticed uh, some, one of our members in that. Um, Miriam Hess works diligently to keep NNH Emergency Food Pantry organized and assists in preparing for cooking classes offered to clients looking for low-cost meal prep ideas. Through her involvement with the back-to-school shop as well as Santa's workshop, she's impacted hundreds of families across northern Hamilton County. There are other people who are involved in the same thing as part of their their vocation, their occupation. Again, I'm not going to embarrass everybody today. That's just Thursday. And I get to hear about that stuff every week. And I'm so proud that it's not just our wonderful staff. I hear all the time people coming to me and saying, here's what Lainey did and it was so amazing. Here's what Liz did. Here's what Dave Masoner means to me. Here's what Heather has done. And I just, I just notice so much the way that she, uh, 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 you know, the way that she handles herself with the women's stuff. It's just, it's so refreshing. I hear people who've gotten insight from uh, my colleagues or from Liz in a counseling session that's changed the way they look at themselves. But what I love most is that it's not just the people on staff. It's the church out there doing the church stuff, being the church, helping other people become what they're supposed to become. Someone told me about a woman who takes walks with her and and, and shares and helps her not fall apart. I could go on and on with stories like this all day, friends, but it's a beautiful thing for me to see that Ephesians 4 really is coming true through your work and your witness, through your giving and through your words. With God's grace, we'll continue to grow in that. We have more to do, just like my brother-in-law's car. It's not finished. But God does have us out of the garage, and there are good things happening. I hope that you're encouraged by that. How are we doing on the math? All right. 
So uh, if you'll join me in uh, uh, praying uh, for the elders and deacons and uh, praying also for this mission that God's given us, please join me. By the way, if you didn't hear, Chris said we have an overwhelming majority of yes. That's the official word from the clerk. Um, Holy Father, we're, um, we're grateful for your, your blessing and the bounty that you've bestowed in all the gifts that you've given to your people. And we're humbled at the great mission that you've given us to become disciples and to make other disciples who look like Jesus. And as we strive to do this together, I pray that you would give us every grace to love one another well, to acknowledge the gifts that others possess and encourage them to be put to work. I pray that you would be kind to us uh, and the failures that we have in this mission. You would help us to attend to that failure, to turn, to repent, to pursue again with zeal the great mission we have to make disciples and to be disciples of Jesus. Will you do this, Lord, so that Jesus' name would be famous, that people who don't know him now would bend the knee to King Jesus, and that this body would truly be built up, knit together into the image of her Savior, in whose name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. All right, brothers and sisters. Um, Chris, do we need a motion to authorize the session? We do need that. I need a motion from the floor to authorize the session to review and approve the minutes of this meeting at the next session meeting. In other words, you think that this was done properly and in order. We have a motion. So moved. Do we have a second? Okay. Any discussion? All right. All in favor? Any nays? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Brothers and sisters, thank you for joining us for this. If you have any questions about what you saw with the graphs, the graphs are in your bulletin this morning. So you can take a look at those. You can also feel free to reach out. uh, If you you have a question about money, I'd ask Chris. If you have a question that's math related, I would ask Chris. But we're happy to answer any questions that you have about uh, mission, about our tasks that we have. Um, And uh, (laughs) we're... uh, We're so blessed to uh, to have you here. Thank you for coming, and uh, God bless you.